everyone. Welcome back to my Bible reading channel where my goal is to bring the Word of God to as many people as possible. So today we'll be picking up where we left off and we'll be finishing off with the book of Jeremiah. So I'm excited. We're progressing. All right. So Jeremiah chapter 51. This is what the Lord says. I will stir up a destroyer against Babylon and the people of Babylonia. Foreigners will come and winnow her blowing her away as chaff they will come from every side to rise against her in to rise against her in her day of trouble don't let the archers put on their armor or draw their bows don't spare even her best soldiers let her army be completely destroyed they will fall dead in the land of the babylonians slashed to death in her stri streets for the Lord of heaven's armies has not abandoned Israel and Judah. He is still their God. Even though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel, flee from Babylon, save yourselves. Don't get trapped in her punishment. It is the Lord's time for vengeance. He will repay her in full. Babylon has been a gold cup in the Lord's hands, a cup that made the whole earth drunk. The nations drank Babylon's wine, and it drove them all mad. But suddenly Babylon too has fallen. Weep for her. Give her medicine. Perhaps she can be yet be healed. We would have helped her if we could, but nothing can save her now. Let her go. Abandon her. Return now to your own land, for her punishment reaches to the heavens. It is so great it cannot be measured. The Lord has vindicated us. Come, let us announce in Jerusalem everything the Lord our God has done. Sharpen the arrows, lift up the shields, for the Lord has inspired the king of the Medes to march against Babylon and destroy her. This is his vengeance against those who desecrated his temple. Raise the battle flag against Babylon. Reinforce the guard and station the watchmen. Prepare an ambush, for the Lord will fulfill all his plans against Babylon. You are a city by a great river, a great center of commerce, but your end has come. The thread of your life is cut. The Lord of heaven's armies has taken this vow and has sworn to it by his own name. Your cities will be filled with enemies, like fields swarming with locusts, and they will shout in triumph over you. The Lord made the earth by his power, and he preserves it by his wisdom. With his own understanding, he stretched out the heavens. When he speaks in the thunder, the heavens roar with rain. He causes the clouds to rise over the earth. He sends the lightning with the rain and releases the wind from his storehouses. The whole human race is foolish and has no knowledge. The craftsmen are disgraced by the idols they make, for their, their care, carefully shaped works are a fraud. These idols have no breath or power. Idols are worthless. They are ridiculous lies. On the day of reckoning, they will all be destroyed. But the God of Israel is no idol. He is the creator of everything that exists, including his people, his own special possession. The Lord of heaven's armies is his name. You are my battle axe and sword, says the Lord. With you I will shatter nations and destroy many kingdoms. With you I will shatter armies, destroying the horse and rider, the chariot and charioteer. With you I will shatter men and women, old people and children, young men and young women. With you I will shatter shepherds and flocks, farmers and oxen, captains and officers. I will repay Babylon and the people of Babylonia for all the wrong they have done. To my people in Jerusalem, says the Lord. Look, O mighty mountain, destroyer of the earth. I am your enemy, says the Lord. I will raise my fist against you to knock you down from the heights. When I am finished, you will be nothing but a heap of burnt rubble. You will be desolate forever. Even your stones will never again be used for building. You will be completely wiped out, says the Lord. Raise a signal flag to the nations. Sound the battle cry. Mobilize them against Babylon. Mobilize them all against Babylon. Prepare them to fight against her. Bring out the armies of Ararat, Mini, and Ashkenaz. Appoint a commander and bring a multitude of horses like swarming locusts. Bring against her the armies of the nations. 
led by the kings of the Medes, and all their captains and officers. The earth trembles and writhes in pain, for everything the Lord has planned against Babylon stands unchanged. Babylon will be left desolate without a single inhabitant. Her mightiest warriors no longer fight. They stay in their barracks, their courage gone. They have become like women. The invaders have burned the houses and broken down the city gates. The news is passed from one runner to the next as the messengers hurry to tell the king that his city has been captured. All the escape routes are blocked. The marshes have been set aflame and the army is in a panic. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. Babylon is like wheat on a threshing floor, about to be trampled. In just a little while, her harvest will begin. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon has eaten and crushed us and drained us all and drained us of strength. He has swallowed us like a great monster and filled his belly with our riches. He has thrown us out of our own country. Make Babylon suffer as she made us suffer, says the people of Zion. Make the people of Babylonia pay for spilling our blood, says Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says to Jerusalem. I will be your lawyer to plead your case, and I will avenge you. I will dry up her river as well as her springs, and Babylon will become a heap of ruins haunted by jackals. She will be an object of horror and contempt, a place where no one lives. Her people will roar together like strong lions. They will growl like lion cubs. And while they lie inflamed with all their wine, I will prepare a different kind of feast for them. I will make them drink until they fall asleep, and they will never wake up again, says the Lord. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams and goats to be sacrificed. How Babylon is fallen, great Babylon, praise throughout the earth. Now she has become an object of horror among the nations. The sea has riven over ba risen over Babylon. She is covered by its crashing waves. Her cities now lie in ruins. She is a dry wasteland where no one lives or even passes by. And I will punish Bel, the god of Babylon, and make him vomit up all he has eaten. The nations will no longer come and worship him. The wall of Babylon has fallen. Come out, my people. Flee from Babylon. Save yourselves. Run from the Lord's fierce anger, but do not panic. Don't be afraid. When you hear the first rumor of approaching forces, for rumors will keep coming year by year. Violence will erupt in the land as the leaders fight against each other. For the time is surely coming when I will punish this great city and all her idols. Her whole land will be disgraced and her dead will lie in the streets. Then the heavens and the earth will rejoice, for out of the north will come destroying armies against Babylon, says the Lord. Just as Babylon killed the people of Israel and others throughout the world, so must her people be killed. Get out, all you who have escaped the sword. Do not stand and watch. Flee while you can. Remember the Lord, though you are in a far-off land, and think about your home in Jerusalem. We are ashamed, the people say. We are insulted and disgraced because the Lord's temple has been defiled by foreigners. Yes, says the Lord, but the time is coming when I will destroy Babylon's idols. The groans of her wounded people will be heard throughout the land. Though Babylon reaches as high as the heavens and makes her fortifications incredibly strong, I will send, still send enemies to plunder her. I, the Lord, have spoken. Listen. Hear the cry of Babylon, the sound of great destruction from the land of the Babylonians. For the Lord is destroying Babylon. He will silence her loud voice. Waves of enemies pound against her. The noise of battle rings through the city. Destroying armies come against Babylon. Her mighty men are captured and their weapons break in their hands. For the Lord is a God who gives us, who gives just punishment. He always repays in full. I will make her officials and wise men drunk, along with her captains, officers, and warriors. They will fall asleep and never wake up again, says the king, whose name is the Lord of Heaven's armies. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies says. The thick walls of Babylon will be leveled to the ground, and her massive gates will be burned. The builders from many lands have worked in vain, for their work will be destroyed by fire. 
The prophet Jeremiah gave this message to Sariah, son of Neriah, and grandson of Masiah, a staff officer, when Sariah went to Babylon with King Zedekiah of Judah. This was during the fourth year of Zedekiah's reign. Jeremiah had recorded on a scroll all the terrible disasters that would soon come upon Babylon, all the words written here. He said to Sariah, When you get to Babylon, read aloud everything on this scroll. Then say, Lord, you have said that you will destroy Babylon so that neither people nor animals will remain here. She will lie empty and abandoned forever. When you have finished reading the scroll, tie it to a stone and throw it into the Euphrates River. Then say, in this same way, Babylon and her people will sink never again to rise because of the disasters I will bring upon her. This is the end of Jeremiah's messages. Jeremiah chapter 52. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 11 years. His mother was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah from Libna. But Zedekiah did what was evil in the Lord's sight, just as Jehoiakim had done. These things happened because of the Lord's anger against the people of Jerusalem and Judah until he finally banished them from his presence and sent them into exile. Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. So on January 15th, during the ninth year of Zedekiah's reign, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon led his entire army against Jerusalem. They surrounded the city and built siege ramps against its walls. Jerusalem was kept under siege until the 11th year of King Zedekiah's reign. By July 18th, in the 11th year of Zedekiah's reign, the famine in the city had become very severe and the last of the food was entirely gone. Then a section of the city wall was broken down, and all the soldiers fled. Since the city was surrounded by the Babylonians, they waited for nightfall. Then they slipped through the gate between the two walls behind the king's garden and headed toward the Jordan Valley. But the Babylonian troops chased King Zedekiah and overtook him on the plains of Jericho, for his men had all deserted him and scattered. They captured the king and took him to the king of Babylon at Riblah, in the land of Hamath. There the king of Babylon pronounced judgment upon Zedekiah. The king of Babylon made Zedekiah watch as he slaughtered his sons. He also slaughtered all the officials of Judah at Riblah. Then he gouged out Zedekiah's eyes and bound him in bronze chains. And the king of Babylon led him away to Babylon. Zedekiah remained there in prison until the day of his death. On August 17th of that year, which was the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar's reign, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard and an official of the Babylonian king, arrived in Jerusalem. He burned down the temple of the Lord, the royal palace, and all the houses of Jerusalem. He destroyed all the important buildings in the city. Then he supervised the entire Babylonian army as they tore down the walls of Jerusalem on every side. Then Nabuzaradan, the captain of the guard, took as exiles some of the poorest of the people, the rest of the people who remained in the city, the defectors, who had declared their allegiance to the king of Babylon, and the rest of the craftsmen. But Nabuzaradan allowed some of the poorest people to stay behind to care for the vineyards and fields. The Babylonians broke up the bronze pillars in front of the Lord's temple the bronze water carts, and the great bronze basin called the sea, and they carried all the bronze away to Babylon. They also took all the ash buckets, shovels, lamp snuffers, basins, dishes, and all the other bronze articles used for making sacrifices at the temple. The captain of the guard also took the small bowls, incense burners, basins, pots, lampstands, ladles, bowls used for liquid offerings, and all the other articles made of pure gold or silver. The weight of the bronze from the two pillars, the sea with the twelve bronze oxen beneath it, and the water carts was too great to be measured. These things had been made for the Lord's temple in the days of King Solomon. Each of the pillars was twenty-seven feet tall and eighteen feet in circum circumference. They were hollow, with walls three inches thick. 
The bronze capital on top of each pillar was seven and a half feet high and was decorated with a network of bronze pomegranates all the way around. There were 96 pomegranates on the sides and a total of 100 pomegranates on the network around the top. Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, took with him as prisoners Sariah, the high priest, Zephaniah, the priest of the second rank, and the three chief gatekeepers, and from another among or, and from among the people still hiding in the city, he took an officer who had been in charge of the Judean army, seven of the king's personal advisors, the army commander's chief secretary who was in charge of recruitment, and 60 other citizens. Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, took them all to the king of Babylon at Riblah. And there at Riblah, in the land of Hamath, the king of Babylon had them all put to death. So the people of Judah were sent into exile from their land. The number of captives taken to Babylon in the seventh year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign was 3,023. Then in Nebuchadnezzar's 18th year, he took 832 more. In Nebuchadnezzar's 23rd year, he sent Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, who took 745 more, a total of 4,600 captives in all. In the third 37th year of the exile of King Jehoiakim of Judah, evil Merodach ascended to the Babylonian throne. He was kind to Jehoiakim and released him from prison on March 31st of that year. He spoke kindly to Jehoiakim and gave him a higher place than all the other exiled kings in Babylon. He supplied Jehoiakim with new clothes to replace his prison garb and allowed him to dine in the king's presence for the rest of his life. So the Babylonian king gave him a regular food allowance as long as he lived. This continued until the day of his death. And there you have it, the conclusion of the book of Jeremiah. Tomorrow we'll start Lamentations. So thank you all so much for your fellowship. As always, feel free to leave your prayer requests in the comments below so that myself, my prayer team, or anyone else who reads them can pray for you. And thank you to everybody who prays for me as well. Thank you all again. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless and goodbye.